Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Purdue Day of Giving. So this is actually the first ever day of Purdue Day of Giving. So I, my name is Kyle Pendergast. I'm the student body president at Purdue, and I'm currently on my way out, actually. I only have a few hours left of my term, so one could say that this is one of my last acts as president. And I'm here today with Tim Korb and Jennifer Neville. So Tim is the assistant head of the dean of the assistant head of the Department of Computer Science, and Jennifer Neville is an associate professor in the Department of Computer Science and Statistics. So today we're going to be talking about computer science and the Department of Computer Science and what you can do to help move Purdue forward. So uh, computer science is actually the only department specifically listed in uh, Purdue's moves outlined by President Daniels at the, at the beginning of his term. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So um, first off, let's get started, um, Jen and Tim. Uh, we let's, uh, let's start with the basics, strengthening computer science. Um, is one of the Purdue moves and the university's priorities that was established um, this school year. So uh, specifically, what did the Department of Computer Science do to become one of those, one, the only department that is listed um, as one of those Purdue moves? Uh, this started actually a couple years ago for us. Uh, the department had Sunil Prabhakar, when he took over, he became, uh, he, like all department heads do, he looked for ways to grow and improve the, the department, improve our ranking. And he, looking around, he saw, he identified a couple of needs in the department and things that we could, opportunities for, for us. One of them was, in particular, the strong demand and growing demand by students to learn more about computer science. And secondly, from the other end, was the strong demand from companies, from, uh, from corporations and corporate partners, to hire students in computing. So his idea was to look at our current enrollment. Uh, at the time, it was about 785 students, and to say, let's, let's pick a target. We could grow the, the, the size of our undergraduate program to maybe 1,000 students, which is roughly a 27% uh, increase. What would we have to do in order to accomplish that? And his vision that he, um, we spent a lot of time in, in the department and then with the dean and the provost was to look at how we could expand the faculty, how we could ex expand the staff, and how we could expand the facilities in order to achieve a, a, that kind of, of growth. And so that's where we are today. Uh, the, the program uh, was received well by the, by the dean and the provost, so we're very grateful to them, and they presented it well to the president. And when the president started his, uh, his MOVES program to, to move Purdue forward, he adopted this program as one of those, uh, one of those things to do. Well, perfect. I, you know, personally, I'm very excited for what the uh, Department of Computer Science will, the goals it'll have in the upcoming years and, and the goals that it'll reach. I, I, as an engineer, we um, go heavily into uh, the realms of computer science and programming, and, and I'm sure not as much as, as you both do, but we, have a, we do have a, um, a take in it. So I want to I talk about some of the initiatives that are, are coming out of um, the Department of Computer Science, specifically, Jen, with the research you're doing in big data. And so I was wondering if you could talk more about that for the viewers and, and what, uh, what that means, what, it, what is big data and why is it important, and what specifically your research is. Sure. Uh, so uh, big data is a term that you've heard a lot in the news lately about, uh, which I think generally refers to the need to have um, systems that can manage the massive amounts of electronic, digital, online data that uh, companies and people are uh, using today. So for example, uh, every day Twitter has more than 500 million tweets and Facebook uh, more than 350 million photos are uploaded. And we uh, really need uh, systems that can store, manage, query, and analyze this kind of data at the scale that it's being produced, uh, which is, is really uh, head and shoulders above what we've seen in the past. And um, so specifically, I uh, work on methods uh, in the area of data mining and machine learning uh, that are really the analytic methods that would be layered on top of uh, these systems that are collecting this data and um, develop algorithms to automatically extract uh, patterns from those data in order for companies to uh, use that data to transform uh, the types of decisions that they're making and produce actionable behaviors. And so, for example, in a company like Facebook, uh, you, they would use methods like this to uh, predict automatically who you might want to become mm. friends with uh, in the near future, and they would use those methods to populate those lists of maybe you should be friends with this person based on who you're already friends with. And um, 
the need for new analytic methods that can address the complexities of the kind of data that's being produced today has really fueled a lot of interest in more research in data mining and machine learning, as well as uh, a demand for students that uh, can actually develop and apply these methods in the real world. Well, fantastic. Sounds like there's a lot of research and opportunities in that area, and it sounds like it's definitely going places. Uh, let's continue to talk a little bit about data, um, specifically the Open Agriculture Data Alliance. Um, Tim, can you share what it is and what it means to campus and uh, just how, uh, how it relates with agriculture and engineering and how it'll bring those different, different disciplines together? Sure. One of the, the ties that, uh, again, that Sunil uh, Prabhakar identified was our tie to ag. That, the, that agriculture at Purdue is extremely important. It's a very well-known and, and highly regarded program. And we were looking for, we knew that that was a unique way for us to contribute to, to Purdue, was to get involved with Purdue Ag. Nobody else has that resource that we have. And so that's part of the, this initiative, the Cyber Sustainability Initiative, which we we'll, may talk a little bit about. Uh, but one way that that's come uh, concrete recently is through this Open Ag Data Alliance. This is something that was actually begun in engineering. A couple of faculty there, one of whom is a farmer part-time, uh, came to us to talk about creating a, an alliance uh, that would be an open source protocol to allow farmers to share data. Uh, the idea is that farmers generate a lot of data uh, on their farms with their planting equipment and their plows and, and tractors. They have um, uh, external uh, people who help them, like people who apply fertilizer and chemicals, and they have a lot of data that is associated with that. In fact, ag is swimming in this data, and I think that's one of the reasons why we're really interested in, in the big data that they would provide for us. Uh, but specifically, this particular program is addressing the, the need of who owns the data and how can farmers maintain ownership of their data and share it with exactly the set of people with whom they want to share it with. They want to, they, they collect it, uh, therefore we think they own it. And if they want to share a piece of it with the person who applies the fertilizers, then they can do that. If they want to share uh, somebody with it the, the, who can recommend what their planting uh, should be, they can work uh, with those people with their data. And so the Open Ag Data Alliance is a, a set of protocols and a set of open source software that will allow anybody to contribute to this big data for, for farming, allow farmers to contribute to it, large corporations, uh, equipment manufacturers, chemical applier, uh, application companies, and so on. It's a very exciting opportunity. We're really glad to be to, able to participate in this. We think we'll not only uh, strengthen our partnership with, with ag, but also with engineering, uh, and then get us into this uh, big data realm for, uh, for ag data. Well, perfect. It sounds incredibly interesting. And actually, funny story, I was just at an agricultural innovation conference last mm -hmm. weekend, and they specifically talked about um, the importance of data and, and acquiring the information about soil content and what's the nutrients that are in the soil and how to interpret that. Because there's, there's many sensors out there you can put in the soil and, and gather certain information, but it's how do you interpret that over a longer period of time and, and how does that work? So. Um, that's maybe, great. That maybe I can jump oh, yeah, in go and ahead. say here that uh, that also connects to one of the other big moves. Uh, so there's the Plant Science mm -hmm. Initiative um, from the College of Agriculture, where there, I think the Open Ag uh, project is a very tangible first step that they're pursuing. Uh, but their vision with the Plant Science Initiative is that they would have sensors planted, uh, you know, this is a very mm -hmm. long-term uh, vision where there would be sensors planted with each plant that would report these, uh, this information about the soil properties and characteristics of the genome of the specific plants. And then they would have that sort of data streaming to them consistently all the time about how the plants are growing, but also they could fly over them with UAVs and collect more information about the quality of the overall crops and uh, what uh, the vision is in our discussions uh, with AG is that we would uh, help to develop the analytic systems mm -hmm. that would allow them to do long-term planning uh, based on this massive amount of data that they could collect. So uh, that's, a <laughs> that's a connection as well. Well, great. Yeah. It sounds like you're all, uh, the computer science department's on the right track. Uh, let's go move to the student, the student side of things. And so you mentioned a 27% growth um, over the next five years as part of Purdue Moves earlier. Um, that's a huge number, so wh why is that such a large projection and where did that projection come from? And then if you could, uh, if you could segue that into kind of the opportunities um, for Purdue, uh, computer science graduates and students at Purdue and, and past their experience at Purdue. Um, I, I 
I hate to say the number came out of a hat, but we have to ask <laughs> Sunil where, where he got that number. Sure. But it was, it was his vision. To, it was a, a, a something that he thought was achievable, that we could, we could, uh, we, we knew we had the, the, the pressure, the enrollment pressure from students there, that is the interest from students to, to come to Purdue. Uh, we, uh, there's, there's no shortage of high quality students, which is very important for us. We want to admit the very best students and, and we're able to do that and uh, attract those students. And uh, we think we can move that number up to up to a thousand. Now, in order to support that, as I said, we have to hire more faculty, and so that's part of what we'll be doing. The advantage of that, being able to to track with the the faculty growth as well, is that we'll be able to improve the student experience. So students will have more faculty um, contact with uh, with uh, more faculty per student ratio, uh, better faculty to student ratio. And, uh, and, and more facilities and resources. So some of the things we want to do, for example, is we, we're, this will give us the opportunity to create a 24-7 help desk for students. So our students don't work from nine to five on their projects. I was <laughs> up at 2.30 two this morning uh, answering questions for students because they, had a, they had, were having a problem with the system they're working on. So they're working all the time. And we want to be able to provide the kind of resources that they need when they need them. And this will give us that opportunity, allowing us to expand the help facility Facilities, the instructional staff, uh, the, the computing facilities that we, we use. I, I know personally as a student, having, the, having a 24-7 help desk would be incredibly beneficial because you're exactly right. There's many times where you're working very late into the night um, and you just you sometimes get stuck and uh, for whatever reasons you have other responsibilities, you can't finish. You can't finish something before the day of and so that, that would be incredibly beneficial. So I'm glad that's something that's being considered. And you mentioned um, uh, more facilities and more space. Uh, do you have any idea like, what that would look like? Would it be actual physical education space or is it just the number of resources? Like, is there any uh, more information there? Well, we're, we're tight on space now. When we moved into the, uh, we planned and built the Lawson building and moved in, it's been uh, about eight years now, well, 2006 was when we moved in. Right when I was hired. Right, uh, right when Janet, see, it, it helped us attract uh, high quality faculty to have, to have good resources, and it certainly does. But we're almost full. We, uh, in, in fact, we have two uh, new faculty who've accepted our offers this, uh, this spring, and we hope to have a few more accept, but we have two offices left. So we will be full uh, in faculty wow. offices in the Lawson building. Uh, what we, fortunately, when we moved from the Haas building, which used to be the computer science building, we l kept some space there. So we do expect that we're going to, uh, to use that space more. We use it now for many staff and, and students, but we will wind up putting faculty in that space as well. So that's our short-term plan. And these, are, these are good problems to have, but we're going to have to deal with this growth uh, of the faculty. We will have to occupy more of the Haas building. Uh, we're hopeful that at some point in the future we'll, we will be able to have a phase two for the Lawson building. That was early on in the mm -hmm. plans. In fact, the original plan was that we would finish uh, phase one in 2006 and finish phase two in 2008. <laughs> well, that got lost in the budget uh, crunches of the, of the mid-2000s and, and we, that didn't come to fruition. But that's still a, one of our hopes is that uh, with this growth in faculty and the, and, the, and the pressure on campus in general for more space, that we will be able to add that wing onto the Lawson building and, uh, and have space to move everybody back in again, the faculty, staff, and students in, in one building. It sounds like the reputation of the, the Department of Computer Science is, um, is going places. And so let's talk about its phenomenal reputation in the past. Um, so Purdue's Computer Science Program is, Department is the oldest in the nation. And Tim, I believe you've been You've been around for about 33 years, correct? And you said 2006. 2006. So maybe if you could both could go through and talk about kind of what um, the department has given you, so you had the, the long-term perspective and then the little shorter-term perspective, I think that would be fantastic for our viewers. Well, it's given me a career. I've been here for, <laughs> <laughs> I've been here for a long time. Uh, it, it's, it's the kind of position. I started in industry after, after I finished graduate school, uh, and I, I like that in a lot of ways, and I have many friends in industry who are now worth a lot more money than I am, <laughs> um, but I wanted to be in the academic environment. I liked the freedom and flexibility uh, that Purdue offered as, a, as an academic institution, and, uh, and it's, it's been a great place to work uh, these years. And of course, interacting with students is, uh, is a great joy. It, uh, it's a, a lot of fun to, to see them grow, over the four years that they're here, or, or four more years that they go to grad school. Uh, and so that's a nice uh, opportunity as well. Perfect. Go ahead. So I guess I would say uh, 
my uh, coming to Purdue uh, really depended on the reputation of the department. Uh, you know, there's currently the push uh, to hire machine learning people and data mining people for to meet the needs of big data, but actually the CS department here uh, saw that need in 2005 when they uh, were interviewing myself and uh, other people that were hired in the department. And so uh, actually they had a very exciting plan at that time to grow into this area of machine learning and data mining, uh, split across the computer science and the statistics department. And so that was one of the things that attracted me to come to Purdue and I think has really uh, positioned us well for having this kind of big move right now because we have uh, six or seven people uh, in our machine learning group so far and so we're really well positioned to offer the kinds of curriculum and uh, research projects that are really needed in this area of big data. So. Fantastic. Thank you for offering your, um, your uh, career experience and giving that input. So um, we've actually had some questions from the audience. And I, so one of the questions uh, st stuck out to me because I have personally have some friends who um, get hired by Microsoft and Facebook and, and all these huge um, uh, software companies. And one of the questions is, um, you know, what are the most, some of the most interesting things about computer science? What are those alumni doing? And uh, specifically, do you see any Mark Zuckerbergs out uh, <laughs> in, your, in your classes or, or walking around campus, any students you've interacted with? Do you want to take that first? Well, I'll, I'll start. Okay. I, well, I certainly hope so. I think that this is a, it is a, an exciting field because of the opportunities you have. Uh, for students who are interested in a traditional, uh, a traditional job and they want, to have, they want to work hard and go to work for a large company, that's possible. For students who want to strike out on their own and, and become entrepreneurs, that's also possible. And it's really exciting to give students that, that option. I, I usually counsel students who are just graduating, say so now's the time. If you want to, if you have the entrepreneurial spirit, now's the, now's your chance. Um, while you're young and single and uh, don't have a lot of obligations, and so a number of students are doing that. And maybe we'll have maybe we'll uh, have an alumnus who, who does does really well. We've had certainly have had some successes mm -hmm. uh, as, as in, the, in in any case, um, nothing quite as large as uh, Facebook, but uh, <laughs> but we have had people who are who are very interested in this. We have entrepreneurial classes. Um, I had a class last semester on mobile and web startups where we had uh, a small number of students who were developing uh, projects and resulted in a, a pitch of those projects at the Anvil, one of the uh, entrepreneurial groups oh. on campus that they uh, had the opportunity to, to pitch and some of those are moving forward. So there's a lot of opportunity uh, there, uh, but there's also a lot of opportunities. I think Jen can address things like the Googles and the Facebook. So <laughs> she's had students who get gobbled up by those companies. Sure, yeah. The, uh, so both at the undergraduate and the graduate level, so at the undergraduate level we have a track in machine intelligence, which is really focused on data mining and machine learning, and then we have a large graduate program uh, with students uh, in that area as well. And the demand for those students is so high right now that people uh, that are two weeks into my undergraduate data mining class are getting offers of internships to uh, <laughs> in the summer to, to go uh, do some of this in industry. And and uh, they're getting offers uh in their junior year uh, to p get locked into jobs uh, by the time they graduate a year later. And uh, I have uh, grad students that are also getting sort of serial internships to try to have companies convince them to graduate as soon as possible. So uh, really, it's actually uh, my job to try to keep them here long enough <laughs> that they'll <laughs> actually finish right. their degrees. Uh, but it's really exciting. And there's lots of opportunities, both at uh, large companies like Facebook or Google or Microsoft, but also um, smaller startups. And I think that uh, it's really uh, exciting that students have a, a wide variety of choices. And uh, it's not just in Silicon Valley. There's lots of companies in Indiana and Illinois that are also trying to hire the students. So it's Oh, exciting. sure. And it's amazing to see the, the creativity that comes out of, of students at Purdue and the Department of Computer Science and, and really any uh, member of the Purdue community. I remember I had a friend who wrote a program that uh, would text you when a class opened up. <laughs> and so and I, I remember telling him, well, you should take it one step further and have it register the class for you. And so what he found was that um, the way he did it, actually, uh, there's, a, there's a limit to how many times you can register, you can try to register for a class. So he hit the limit and got kicked out of the system and couldn't register for class. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it just goes to show the types of the, the intelligence and the, the type of um, Purdue students that we have at Purdue. They're very creative and they know um, when they see a problem, they can go for it and they can figure it out and make it happen. 
Um, so I want to real I want to talk about the Purdue's affordability and success um, for affordability and access accessibility initiative. What does that mean for the Department of Computer Science? How how um, what's the benefit there? Well. Uh, we are, we're, we are trying to attract and, and, and retain as many students, uh, qualified students as we can, and make the degree affordable. Obviously, uh, the president has plans to keep the tuition frozen, and many of us uh, took a, our, our, our pay freeze in order to help achieve that. Uh, and so that's part of the affordability option to, uh, to uh, allow students to afford to come here. For students who still struggle and, and have to, um, don't have enough money, we do offer scholarships and awards. And in fact, I think one of the issues we want to bring up is that the department is, uh, is matching gifts today up to $20,000 for scholarships and awards for, for students. So we're very interested in, in providing funding for students. Uh, the Purdue Day of Giving is one way to do that. Uh, we also have corporate partners and, uh, and active alumni who provide support for students as well in the form of uh, awards and scholarships. Perfect. And so um, the kinds of gifts you're looking for today, is it scholarships or is it I mean, in addition to scholarships to fund research and, and uh, other, other initiatives or could you talk, touch on that? Our main focus today is on scholarships, okay. awards and scholarships, yes. We're, we're student focused uh, today and, uh, and hoping to raise money to support students coming in who need, need financial assistance. Perfect. Well, again, um, for all the, the, um, the viewers out there, uh, today, again, it's today is the Purdue Day of Giving. And so all, um, all funds given to the Department of Computer Science up until midnight tonight will be matched up to $20,000. So you can go. Um, support the department by uh, giving at the Donate Now button on the Purdue Day of Giving website and then um, select the College of Science and the Computer Science Excellence Fund. So again, any funds given up to midnight tonight will be matched um, by the, uh, matched up to $20,000. So please go online and do that if you, if you feel the desire to, and to give back to Purdue and to make, a, to make a difference for students and for the Department of Computer Science. So now we're going to move into our um, rapid fire uh, quiz and so make it a little uh, make it a little fun and wrap up the discussion. So, Jen, you'll answer first, and then Tim, you'll answer right after. So here we go. Um, so the first question is black or gold? Definitely black. 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 Okay. Smokestack or the Purdue Bell Tower? The Bell Tower. Bell Tower. Slater, uh, sledding or a concert on Slater Hill? I would have to say sledding after this winter. <laughs> <laughs> I like the concerts. All right. Um, the Purdue Mall Fountain or Loeb Fountain? Loeb Fountain. Loeb Fountain. Uh, me too. Boilermaker Special or Purdue Pete? Purdue Pete. Uh, Boilermaker Special. All right. Springfest Bug, uh, uh, for the Springfest Bug Bowl, cockroach uh, racing or cricket spitting? Cricket spitting. Oh, okay. <laughs> cockroach <laughs> racing. Okay. Um, and the last question, um, as part of Purdue Day of Giving, give it back or pay it forward? Pay it forward. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. All right. Well, again, um, to all our viewers today, you can give back or pay it forward using the Donate Now button on the Purdue Day of Giving website. Um, thank you for watching, and make sure to check out Twitter for all the hashtag Purdue Day of Giving and check out all the different initiatives that you can, um, that you can support. Have a good day.